You hear the kookaburras out there? They're laughing at me. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today marks episode 2 in the Butcher of Blaviken. So today is sort of a mini tutorial on a certain part of Geralt's costume. So today we're going to be doing a foam based tutorial that is going to be focusing on his shoulder braces and the bicep braces and also to a lesser extent the gauntlets. So the whole method that you are going to see in this video applies for the entire bit of armor that is covered in rivets that we see Henry Cavill sport for majority of the series of The Witcher on Netflix. I am leaving the torso armor for a completely separate video because there is a lot of work to do and some different things to do here and there in terms of drawing up the templates and how I'm basing the templates off pre-existing cosplays of mine. So of course the basis for this build is EVA foam. So. The build that we're going to be doing today is utilizing foam floor mats from Bunnings Warehouse. These are $9.95 very cheap, nasty, easy, just wonderful to work with. In terms of the torso armor, which will probably be episode three or four, we're gonna be using some high quality EVA foam from the amazing crew over at Lumen's Workshop. This is a very time consuming costume geeks and geek ads. I cannot stress enough, but it is very easy to do and very easy to follow with the steps. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so here are the materials that we're gonna be using for today. Now, the main focus of this video is gonna be the shoulder pad we're going to be using EVA foam that's going to have a polyurethane slash vinyl um, piece contact adhered down to it. So, don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up. So, as you can see, it's got a beautiful leather texture and the contact adhesive is going to grip on to the bottom of this very well there. As you can see, it's got a very porous surface. So, the EVA foam we're going to be using are EVA foam floor mats from Bunnings Warehouse. These cost about $9.95. So, these mats are 10 mil or one centimeter in thickness. So, it is ideal uh, for the shoulder, bicep, armor, and the gauntlets. So, this is the template for the shoulder armor. I completely eyeballed this from pictures of the screen used suit on display uh, in Europe. So as you can see there, once it's wrapped around, it looks pretty good. So, so we're gonna be tracing this onto the EVA foam. We're then gonna be cutting it out with a Stanley knife, an X-Acto knife, and then we can get to work smoothing off all the edges. Now, we're gonna be taking a file and filing down the lip, so the perimeter of the shoulder pad as well as cutting in the three grooves of the shoulder pad with a Stanley knife and we're going to smooth that all down with various sanding sponges and sandpaper. Then once that's done I'm all happy with it, it's all smoothed down looking nice and neat. We're then going to grab our contact adhesive. We are going to be using the Sika premium contact adhesive. Grab yourself some disposable brushes and you have to apply it to both surfaces. That is the purpose of contact adhesive. Contact has to be made to both surfaces. We're going to let them get tacky dry. So in other words we're going to let the EVA foam and the polyurethane slash vinyl uh, covering get tack dry and then bond the two together. So I'm then going to be using little sculpting tools to really dig uh, the vinyl wrap into the grooves, especially the three grooves of the shoulder pad. So here's one I prepared earlier. This is one side of the shoulder pad. So if we can get the other one looking exactly like this, we're in business. And this is what I mean by uh, taking sculpting tools and just making sure that the contact adhesive is really sticking to both parties and uh, that the wrap is actually getting into those grooves like so. We also have some leather stitching around there and then we do have to move on to the leather stitching within the grooves and also placing the rivets. Like I said, this method applies to every piece of the armor. Still deciding whether to use this for the torso armor or grab a bigger sheet, but for the time being, let's focus on replicating this shoulder pad.
Okay, so a lot has happened since I've hit record on the camera. I actually backtracked and uh, decided on a brand new pleather, something that has a lot more of a sporadic texture on it. Now, I am trying my hardest to find more of this pleather because it is sold out everywhere. If not, I will go back to the original pleather uh, for the remainder of the armor. And it won't be much of a difference in terms of a visual representation, but it's just more or less the OCDs kicking in hardcore. Now, I actually did go around and add the lip and we will be adding stitching to that. But for now, we're gonna be focusing on uh, the ribbing stitching, the rows of stitching here with these three grooves. So overall, I'm very happy with the progress so far. So as you can see, kind of started on this row here as a test. So this wasn't punched, this wasn't drilled. This was actually getting a drill bit and putting it into a soldering iron. So this is brand new actually, I had to get another one. So we're gonna place it in the soldering iron, lock it in place, and we have to go in on the bench grinder and get this down to a sharp point. And obviously once it heats up, it just melts straight through the pleather and the EVA foam like butter. And it just makes work a lot easier in terms of prepping this for the leather stitching part. This is the leather stitching we will be using. Um, some of it on its own, some of it with a needle. So we're gonna be probably doing a montage to show you guys how it's done. So um, it'll be stitched out from the middle on each side. So, you know, we've got side side going in to each hole. And then after that, we can get started on the rivet work. Okay, so I've gone ahead and marked out where we're gonna be burning in holes on the shoulder pad here. So if you'll notice, there's different colored Sharpies here. Now the darker one is gonna be for the darker color rivets, whilst obviously the silver ones are gonna be just for the plain silver rivets. So, so we're actually gonna be using this sculpting tool that we're gonna heat up on the blowtorch and puncture the holes in. And it literally melts through this stuff like butter, much like the way we did the stitching on the ribs here. And then it's just a matter of gluing the rivets in place. We're gonna put some super glue in the hole first and then pop the rivet in and it'll hold it there like there's no tomorrow. And then that is one shoulder pad done, geeks and geekettes. We have to repeat this entire step over the other shoulder pad, the arm armor, the gauntlets, and then I'm leaving the torso till very last because that is gonna be a shit of a job. Now, unfortunately, my battery went dead, uh, so I went ahead and set most of the rivets, but I will do a demonstration on this final one right here. So, this is using the darker rivet. Now, these rivets are actually five mil size rivets. They're one of the smallest ones you can get. So, we're just gonna take our very cheap super glue from Bunnings and just squirt a bit right there, and then literally, Drop it in like so. There you go. Now you'll also notice that some of the rivets are sunk a lot more inside of the shoulder pads. Now that is because they have been actually fixed instead of glued as you can see right here. And that is because you look at the armor and some rivets are set a lot deeper than others. It's kind of very sporadic the way they've, they've done the riveting system on Henry Cavill's costume. So these ones that you see here are actually riveted in with the post that came with the rivets while the others that sit flush on the armor have just been glued in place. Okay, the final step on this shoulder pad is we're gonna take some black shoe polish did you guys see there, we still got the exposed gray uh, EVA foam. Just gonna get the shoe polish and wipe it around the perimeter of the shoulder pad and that'll blend it back into the pleather and make it look a lot more uniform. Okay, so before we wrap this video up, I just wanna show you guys uh, another method that you can use in terms of uh, adding the holes, putting the rivets in, and that is the flat method. So before we actually heat form it and form it to the shape it is, 
Um, we can actually work on it whilst it's flat. Now, this is a gauntlet slash bracer for the costume. So what I've been doing is actually getting a hole punch and reversing it and using it as a hammer, but I actually do use a hammer as well to hammer the holes in. So you can use that method as well as a handheld hole punch as well as the uh, burning method. So you've got some options there to add your holes through your pieces. Now in terms of the rivets, I've just been adding them by hand and just locking them in place. So I get my post, thread it through there, and there you go, it locks in like so. Because the posts have little notches in them, they actually lock in. And then once all the rivets have been placed, I'll turn it upside down, get a hammer, and just hammer them all in so they're properly and permanently locked in place. Then once all the rivets are done, and obviously we've already done the stitching, we can then heat form it. And I will actually be adding uh, some grommets slash eyelets on either side because from what I've seen on Henry's gauntlet slash braces, he's got five eyelets or grommets on either side. And there we have it, Geeks and Geekettes. We have the shoulder braces, the upper arm braces, and the gauntlet, which is out of frame at the moment. The first gauntlet, for that matter, uh, has been heat formed and is around the mannequin. So usually I'd even it out and do the left gauntlet today, but like I said, this is a very time consuming costume. So I think I'm just gonna leave it for a couple of days, just let myself recharge and then knock the left one over. You hear the kookaburras out there? They're laughing at me. Thank you so much as always for watching, guys. I am beyond thrilled with how this is turning out so far. It has literally been doing my head in. It's not that involved in terms of the engineering of the costume. It's just getting it to look a trillion bucks when you're using EVA foam or a vinyl and polyurethane sheet. As opposed to Henry's, which is 100% beautiful, pure leather. So episode three will probably revolve around the torso armor. Uh, it is Friday today. On Monday, I'll probably get my order of EVA foam from Lumen's workshop and then we can get started on the templates cutting it out and then get to work because that is going to be the most labor intensive part of this costume so far so you thought this was labor intensive you have to times that by let's say six seven or eight times all around on the front and the back I hope you have yourselves a cracker of a day hope you're well hope you're happy be merry be silly and until next time geeks please always remember cosplayers do it best